Hello everybody, this is DumpsterCat. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we'll be outlining the recent spoiler of Urborg Lergoif um, and its applications into BGX in Pioneer. It's kind of weird. Wizards kind of want to be printing the past into the present, it seems, with the recent spoiler of Liliana of the Veil vale being reprinted into Dominaria United. And of course, now we have this Tomagreif spinoff in Urborg Lergoif. And so let's go over it. So it's two mana with a kicker of a blue and and or a black. So in just in our BGX rock case, it's gonna be just a black. When it enters the battlefield, we get to mill three cards for each time it's kicked, so just once for us. And then its power is equal to the number of creature cards in our graveyard, and its toughness is equal to that plus one. So obviously very reminiscent of Tarmogoyf. Only caring about creature cards is very different, um, and it kind of leans itself into one direction than the other. However, it being kind of Tarmogryph's cousin, if you will, um, it is going to be worth some consideration in how it applies to uh, BGX Rock and Pioneer, as Tarmogryph was, and still is to a lesser extent, such an e efficient a threat in modern and other um, eternal formats, and so it's going to be worth some consideration in how it applies to the two-drop slot and perhaps three-drop slot with the kicker in Pioneer BGX Rock. And so with any new card, we have to see how it slots into the deck. And so obviously it is kind of a two slash three drop. So let's start with the two drops. So in just black green, we already have Grim Flayer, Scooze, and then to a lesser extent, Tenacious Underdog and Ranger Class. And it, it is pretty interesting. Um, so Underdog and Ranger Class are a bit lesser played than obviously Flayer and Scooze. Um, I feel that Underdog is a bit more powerful than Ranger Class at the moment. Just being able to recur itself is great against mid-range. Um, however, the last level in Ranger class is quite relevant and is a nice mana sink that kind of buffs your creatures as the game goes on. So that is worth consideration as well. However, we do see that the new Lurgoith um, has pretty relevant synergies with Underdog and with Flare, being able to uh, put more cards into your graveyard for Grim Flare to get Delirious and to just put an Underdog into the graveyard um, does have some pretty much some pretty good value to it. However, it is interesting to see how um, cards like Scooze and Ranger Class play with it. Because they don't have any obvious immediate synergies, it is more interesting to see how um, you know the the slots play out in terms of the two drops and how um, slash if we want to put Lurgoyth in in place of say maybe two Ranger Class, one Underdog, those types of things. Um, so we do have to take into account the certain uh, uh, pros and cons of how we want to rebuild the deck to uh, put Lurgoif in. And so as I mentioned, Urborg Lurgoif has some pretty immediate consistencies and synergies with Grim Flayer and Underdog. However, uh, the I guess it, he, <laughs> it has um, a pretty good uh, synergy with Liliana of the Veil as well, because we know that um, there's going to be a lot of testing with her, um, her being just a powerhouse in terms of depletion and resource denial. It is going to be interesting to see how she slots in with Tarm or the new Tarmogoyf, I should say, with the old Tarmogoyf, the, the Tarm Tarmogoyf. Um, he goes very well alongside Liliana of the Veil vale as a very efficient threat to kind of take advantage of the resource denial that Liliana of the Veil vale, uh, represents. And in, in that sense, the depletion that Liliana of the Veil vale provides uh, kind of plays to Tarmogryph's advantages of just being able to beat down your opponent very quickly. In terms of Urborg Lurgoyf, only caring about creature cards is really where I kind of see him not shining as much as a card like Grim Flayer or Tenacious Underdog, in the sense that, say on turn 2 or even turn 3, I don't really see this card being more than a 2-3, um, a 3-4 at best, um, especially in a deck where we have you know, non-creature cards like, you know, Thoughtseize, Fatal Push, Abrupt Decay, Assassin's Trophy, and then of course, you know, the new Lily, Liliana of the Veil. Vale. I really don't think that Urbic Lurgoif is going to be that big, and although the, you know, ETB effect does have consistencies, or sorry, synergies with Grim Flare and Underdog and, you know, other do other uh, cards such as, say, Cling to Dust, um, I don't really think that it's going to be that good in terms of, you know, only trying to make Lurgoyf better, um, I, 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 don't, I don't know, I don't really see it being more than a 3-4 as I said, and I feel like, you know, probably just playing more flares and more underdogs 
and obviously the screws is um, you can't take screws out I believe so I don't really see Erbergler growth going into the two drop slot but uh, it is worth mentioning that um, it can be a three drop with the kicker or even a four drop if you want to be playing blue as well and so let's go into that and so while there's more contestation in terms of how Lurgoyth is a two drop and how it slots in the two drop slot in BGX Rock in Pioneer. Um, in terms of the three drop slot, it were pretty stacked already. Um, obviously, we had Bridge Tracker, Graveyard Trespasser, Liliana the Veil, um, and then to a lesser extent, Jade Light Ranger. Um, I know KO Diamonds really likes Old Rutstein. Those types of cards are already very powerful, already have kind of an immediate impact on the board, whereas Lurgoyth is just kind of uh you don't really know how well it's going to be off the bat and so there's going to be some uncertainty uncertainty surrounding that um and then obviously uh i put tireless tracker on here as well but most of the time we're going to be playing it as four drop but it's still worth considering how it fits inside the deck in terms of cmc values um and you know here we could really see how it lines up with you know very powerful cards like jade light ranger and graveyard trespasser where they just have very nice bodies as is, but they also have immediate impact on either the board or card advantage or both. And so I think that that's where Lurgrave really kind of uh, tapers off from these already strong cards we have, where it, it, it's not guaranteed that it's gonna be a, a big three, four, um, uh, four, five, that type of thing. And on top of that, you, you don't, it doesn't advance your board, it doesn't give you card advantage, you know, sure, it can give you some type of synergies with Grim Flare, as I mentioned, um, or, uh, you know, card advantage if you're bringing cards back from the graveyard. It does kind of work well with Liliana of the Veil, with her plus um, being uh, being able to discard extra creature cards if you need to. But I really don't feel like it has that much more value than just being a, uh, a big beater. And I feel like, you know, having uh, utility on top of your beater cards are going to be really... Are, is what where we really want to be at in BGX. So cards like Briar Breach Tracker or Tireless Tracker are, you know, good attackers, but they also have value on top of them. So I don't feel like, or so I feel like Lurgoyf is not going to be that powerful because we're, it's already uncertain that it's going to be a big creature and it doesn't really have that much value on top of that. And so my last thoughts about the card, I really like the design of it. I really love Wizards kind of playing into this blast of from the past theme where they you know they're bringing back Liliana of the Veil and now this spin spinoff however I don't really think it's going to be good in BGX um, you know obviously Tarmogryph was and still it's a very good card but just going you know in modern you have fetch lands you have turn one effects like fatal push and thought seize that count towards Tarmogryph's power and toughness uh, whereas Lurgoyf is just not going to be that big you know with uh going you know turn one thought sees turn two lurgoyf is still probably just going to be a one two maybe two three at best on turn two uh and you know that is not very good not very that not that much good in terms of its counterparts such as a tenacious underdog or a grim flare that could get you you know card selection or late game um card advantage and so in that sense i don't really think lurgoyf is going to be that good as i said um, it's very uncertain that's going to be big enough to facilitate the resource depletion um, advantages that BGX is going to have with the new printing of Liliana of, of the Veil and just the one-for-one one, um, play pattern that we want to be playing. And so I feel like Lurgoyth is, although very attractive in the sense that it is Termogryph's cousin, I guess you could say, um, I feel like it's just not going to be efficient enough. Obviously, two mana for you know, the possibility of a 5, 6, a 6, 7 is really attractive, but I don't feel like it's going to be um, that good on average. And I feel like, um, you know, its relevance in terms of its relation to the other cards that we're going to be playing or that we want to be playing in a mid-range deck, such as, you know, the aforementioned one-for-one -one interaction, the possibilities of two-for-one interaction with Liana the Veil, Tireless Tracker, uh, Grim Flare, it doesn't really seem that good to be honest and i feel like its home is more in, into a or is more with a more graveyard centric creature based strategy where you have cards like say citrus supplier 
or Grizzly Salvage, Seder Wayfinder, that could get cards into or creature cards specifically into your graveyard very efficiently. And so Lurgoth can be on turn three when you're gonna be attacking with them, a five six, you know, a six seven, those types of things where it's gonna be more efficient, more of an efficient threat. Um, alongside other creature cards. Uh, and you know, in that sense, I, I just don't I don't see Lurgoth. Unfortunately, I don't see him in uh, BGX Rock. I, I really wanted to, you know, when I first saw this card spoiled, I was like, dang, like that'd be really nice to have just an efficient two drops creature um, in BGX Rock because the two drops are not the best, to be honest. You know, I really love Scooze. I really love Grim Flare, um, but they're not the, the most efficient threats. They obviously have great utility, but they're not very efficient. And I think Lurgoyth is very much weaker than them in the sense that it's not it's not a very guaranteed efficient threat and it doesn't have the kind of card advantage that um, other cards other two drops and three drops have tied onto them uh you know like trackery like scoos that type of thing uh graveyard trespasser being a great card that we have access to and you know turn three lurgoif with kicker is not just that impactful and um it is true that pioneer is kind of a turn three and turn four format and so if you're going to be playing Lurgoyf, say, you know, double kicked uh, with blue and black on turn four, you're going to be wanting to have a lot of creatures in your deck. And that's not really what we want to be doing with um, BGX Rock. Uh, you know, BG, uh, say, creature graveyard strategy, that's what you want to be doing with Stitcher Supplier, with Stater Wayfinder, but with cards like Thought Seize, like Fatal Push, like other efficient threats um, and efficient re removal spells. I unfortunately don't think he's going to be that good. Uh, but anyways, leave your thoughts in the, um, the comments down below. Let me know how you guys feel about these new types of videos of these kind of speculation videos. They're really fun for me to make, so um, I hope you guys enjoy them too. Um, keep your eyes out for more BGX Rock content in Pioneer. I'm really loving the new spoilers. Um, Liliana of the Veil vale really got me started on you know brewing up very different um decks different kind of speculation of cards so it's been really fun but before i end the video i wanted to give a quick shout out to mark molding um, one of our subscribers i was talking to him about urberg lurgoif and um got some very insightful thoughts from him so i appreciate his uh, understanding and his insights about uh, this card and obviously with bgx rock in general and pioneer um, other than that Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.